Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of the book Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car. What I want to talk about in today's video are vents. Vents that you put in the bonnet, put in the hood. Now, those vents might be designed to let air out, or they might be designed to pull air in. Where do you put them? How do you know where to put them? And how do you know what they're going to do once you put them there? Well, the first thing to realise, and we'll use the example of air coming from under the bonnet and going out to the atmosphere, the first thing to realise is for that air movement to occur through a hole, through a vent, there has to be a higher pressure in the engine bay under the bonnet than there is outside on top of the surface of the bonnet. If the pressures are the same, top and bottom of the metal, even if you put a hole there, no airflow is going to occur either way. So how do you measure those pressures? Well, you can use a magnahelic gauge, a sensitive gauge that can measure these small aerodynamic pressures. And you can either use a special surface sensing probe, which I describe in the book, or in some ways it's easier, and, and it's, it's rougher, but, but quicker and easier, just to use the open end of the hose, and then run it to the gauge. Make sure in that case you put the hose at right angles to the apparent flow. Now, if you measure under the bonnet, and there's a higher pressure than there is on the surface of the bonnet at that point, then when you make a vent, when you put a hole there, the air will flow out. Now, once you've put the vent there, you can check that in fact the flow direction is as you had imagined it would be by wool tufting it and seeing if the air is, is, is coming out or if you've made a mistake, is going in by the movement of those wool tufts. Are there any rules of thumb you can use? Now, I hate these aerodynamic rules of thumb because people have been relying on them for so long rather than doing simple testing of the sort that I describe in the book and very often those rules of thumb are wrong. But having said that, there are a couple of rules of thumb that are applicable in most circumstances and in, in, in most airflow circumstances, a thing I'll come back to in a moment. Where the airflow wraps around the leading edge of the bonnet, if that flow is attached, then that will be a lower pressure area. So if you want to put vents on your bonnet to let the most air out, they should be fairly far forward where there is a curve in the bonnet coming around from the front surface. Now, trouble with that is what happens if you have a yaw component to the airflow. There's a crosswind. Then, Vents along the edges of the bonnet are more likely to work well because the airflow is wrapping around the sides of the bonnet rather than just wrapping around the front. So you can see that the actual performance of vents depends not only on their location but also on the yaw component of the airflow that you're actually driving through at that point in time. But it's still better to make those measurements actually measure the pressures on top, to measure the pressures underneath, and then to put those vents into logical positions. Logical positions where you have a higher pressure underneath than on the surface, and therefore that air will flow out. Now, why would you want to achieve that? Why would you want air flowing out from under your bonnet? Uh, primarily to improve the performance of front-mounted uh, heat exchangers, radiators, oil coolers, intercoolers, and so on. But I'm going to talk a little bit more about improving the performance of heat exchangers in another video. At this stage, let's just leave it on the idea that vents are located where there is a pressure differential, and the higher that pressure differential, the more air that will actually flow through that vent. I cover all of this in the book. I, I've uh, installed bonnet vents, hood vents. Uh, I've got examples of their measured performance. I've got examples of their measured pressure differential. And so you can really see from the book examples how you can apply this to your own car. Thank you.